Hey, what's going on, Happy Hustlers? This is your boy Tom, and thank you so much for watching episode number three of the Journey to a Million, where I'm gonna be scaling my business up to the seven figure mark and selling it for seven figures in 2019. So, thank you so much for coming back to watch a, another episode. And today, we have a very special guest that's gonna be appearing on our episode. His name is David Zaleski. Some of you guys know his YouTube channel, uh, Sellerology, his Facebook group. So he actually flew here from Chicago to attend the first ever Vancouver meetup, uh, FBA meetup. So in this video, uh, we got some snippets of the actual meetup itself. I do apologize for our lighting because it was very dark. It was our first time doing something like this. So I will definitely improve next time. But today in this video, we talked about um, the importance of product selection, how we pick products. And surprisingly, in this meetup, over 35 people actually came. It was a packed house. So if you guys are actually from Vancouver, feel free to leave me a comment down below. I would love to invite you guys to the email list so that we can actually do more of these down the road. But without further ado, let's jump right into the content of episode number three of Journey to a Million. <laughs> Working on stuff, guys. I'm working on a PowerPoint here for tonight, for tonight's meetup later. In about two hours, we're doing a, a presentation on product research for Amazon. So yeah. getting ready, looking over the slides here and adding some golden nuggets toward the end. I started Amazon about a year ago, on January the 1st, 2017 actually. So pretty much a little bit over a year. And uh, I had a YouTube channel and a Facebook group and never done anything locally and I've always wanted to. So this is kind of the first crack at it and I was really surprised that like, there were so many people that showed up. So really appreciate you guys coming out because it's you know snowing outside and stuff like that. So I'm gonna try to bring you guys as much value as possible so that when you go home next when you go home, next time even there's a hurricane, you'd be like, I still wanna come. <laughs> That's my goal today. David over there, actually, we met through selling on Amazon together. Uh, How's it going, guys? Facebook group, it's his first time in Vancouver. He's from Chicago, so he uh, flew in today. Picked him up from the airport, and um, we've just been, yeah, working here in the afternoon, and so, welcome to Vancouver, David. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess we'll just start. Thanks for coming out, guys. Um, so, how many of you guys are actually selling on Amazon? Either you're doing private label, one, two, three, four. Are you guys doing private label or? Oh, okay. So, majority of us are not selling on Amazon yet. Um, we're just fine because I personally just started only a year ago. But I will try to make everything as most relevant to you guys as possible, and especially for beginners, because obviously there's more beginners here. Uh, but I think even if you're a seasoned vet or whatever, you'll still hopefully get a lot of value out of this. Yeah, that's good. Um, do you have a chair? And I'll grab you one. Um, so, who does not know what Amazon FBA is? Like, they just have no idea what Amazon FBA is. It's okay to raise your hand, I promise. Ah, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, okay, so Amazon FBA stands for Fulfilled by Amazon, right? When we go on Amazon.com, Amazon.com is a marketplace. There's buyers and then there's sellers, right? So everybody's shopped on Amazon before, I'm sure, like most people have. Okay, so when you go on Amazon, you type in a chair, or let's say like mason jar, right? Um, there's gonna be a lot of different listings on Amazon. And you as a consumer, you as the buyer, have to make a decision like which of these mason jars will I buy. Um, so you know how like some Amazon, uh, there's like it says Prime on the side? So how that works is if you click on that and buy that product, it will get delivered to your house usually within two or three days. But how that gets delivered is Amazon stores all these different, you know, mason jars at their warehouse so that if someone does go on Amazon.com and buy the product, Amazon actually ship it out for on behalf of the seller, right? So behind every single listing, there's essentially someone who's selling this product. It could be me. I could be, I could literally go to China tomorrow and find a mason jar manufacturer and call this Tom's mason jar and then post it on Amazon.com and ship everything to Amazon. If someone wants to buy my product tomorrow, Amazon will ship it out for them. 
So that's kind of the beautiful thing about Amazon FBA is Amazon takes care of all the fulfillment, right? Amazon takes care of like the, you know, the shipping, logistics, warehouse, all the boring stuff that you don't need to do, right? Uh, there's actually more chairs through that door right to the right. No, there, so, no more? Oh, shit, no more. Uh, actually, there's a couple more here. More jungle presentation real quick. With any online businesses, if we were to dumb it down, there's essentially just two different parts. There is traffic and there's conversion. So what I mean by that is this. Let's pretend that we opened up a donut shop tomorrow. One donut shop opened in downtown Vancouver. One donut, donut shop opened in, let's say, Chilliwack. Everything else is the same. The quality of the donut is the same. Which one do you think is going to be the same for customers? Probably the one in downtown Vancouver because there's more people walking around this area. So that's what I mean by traffic. And then when it comes to conversion, what I mean by that is if someone comes into the donut shop, let's say the one in Chilliwack has like really nice lighting, everything's really clean, the staffs are friendly, versus the one in Vancouver, although they have more people walking around, but there's rats around running around. There's, you know, there's glasses are broken, there's no lights. Obviously no one's gonna actually buy any donuts from them. So that's what I mean by conversion. Does that make sense? Okay. So yeah, well, yeah. So that's we'll, we'll hit it. So I am gonna today. What I want to talk about is oh, go back. Um, how to find profitable products to sell on Amazon, and essentially checklist to make sure that your product isn't gonna be a failure. The best way to find profitable products to sell on Amazon and how to spy on competition. And I'm just gonna say this right off the bat. Your, pro your product research, how you find products, what you sell on Amazon is literally gonna make or break your business. And this is the biggest, this is by far the biggest, biggest mistake every single beginner makes. Because I do coaching on the side and a lot of people call me, they're like, hey Tom, um, this is my product, I'm not selling. I'm like, yeah, you're not selling because your product, no one, like no one in your market is selling. So how can you sell, right? So this I think is seriously the most important part of um, Amazon FBA. So I just want to make a quick intro. Um, my name is Tom, and uh, I've been selling on Amazon for a year now. Um, I started selling on Amazon. The, the little background story of how I came about uh, finding Amazon is this: is I was uh, graduated from university, which I'll talk about a little bit later, and I was looking for a job, and I couldn't find a job, and I was trying to, you know, do some side hustles. And then during that time, was basically where the hoverboard craze came came through. So I was selling you know, hoverboards online and I thought, wow, just by creating a website and stuff like that, and I can, you know, just by creating a website, I can sell hoverboards, but that was clearly not the case. And then my, friend, my friend's friend approached me and was like, hey, I sell on Amazon. Give these hover hoverboards to me. I will sell these on Amazon for you in exchange for commission. I was like, yeah, that's a deal for sure. And um, he ended up selling a lot through Amazon. And I was like, I had no idea what Amazon was at that point. I never bought anything off Amazon, and that's kind of the first first exposure that I got from Amazon. So since then, kind of the rest was history. I took everything I learned from the hoverboard business, and then basically got into Amazon private label. So I want to share some uh, quick story about myself first, because I think it's important. Even you know when you go out there and try to learn from people, I think it's really important who you learn from. Um, there are a lot of people online these days that say they're this, they're that. The truth is, a lot of people are not qualified. And for me, I'm not saying I'm the biggest Amazon seller, by far I'm not, I'm just a little, little ant. But I've gotten my hands dirty. I've built this business with my girlfriend from the, from the ground up. So we've gotten our business to almost $100,000 uh, per month mark, and we have a very good, healthy profit margin. And all I wanna do is teach you guys everything I know about Amazon FBA, but that doesn't mean I know everything about Amazon FBA. I'm just sharing what worked, what didn't work. So, but going back, I just wanna say this, is these are all the universities that I actually went to. Not by choice, but I got kicked out of UBC my first year. Um, then I went to Langara. I got kicked out of Langara, went to Kwanlin. I got kicked out of, well, I didn't get kicked out of Kwanlin. I dropped out of Kwanlin. Um, then I went to BCIT for two years, which was actually a great decision. BCIT, best school. Um, if you guys have kids or whatever, send them to BCIT because it's really good. No, I went through that one already. So after I got from BCIT, I was trying to apply for jobs. 
Um, BCIT is well known for um, right after you graduate, you can find a job, that's what they pitch you. And for me, I struggled. I struggled with that because um, I didn't have the word sales representative. I went, I went for sales um, and I didn't have the word sales representative on my resume. So a lot of employers didn't end up hiring me. So let's just, David, let's just roll this. One, next, 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 uh, next, uh, next. Okay, so uh, you probably can't read this, but this is the email that I sent to a talent, it's a startup in Vancouver that I really wanted to work for. And it pretty much said, you can't read this, but it pretty much said like, I'm willing to work for you for free for three months. Because that's how desperate I was. And that was about, I think that was in June. I was like, I'll work for you for free. Like, why wouldn't you hire me? And the answer was no. David, next. So I got a job at Yellow Pages. Um, not by choice, again. But because of desperation, um, I was, it, I went for a networking event. Someone was like, hey, you should go apply at Yellow Pages. I was like, I don't want to sell newspaper ads anymore in 2015 or 16. Uh, but they're like, no, no, just go try it out. I was like, you know what, screw it, I'll go. So I ended up getting hired at uh, Yellow Pages. They, they do. Next. We'll just put the camera down, screw it. <laughs> well, well, hey, just put the camera on the um, table. Yeah. Then, yeah. Um, <laughs> wait, go back. Is that next slide? No, go back. Yeah, and then go for it. Okay, so fast forward, um, I worked my ass off. Um, it was very, very, like Wolf of Wall Street almost style, like cold calling every day, like I called 100 clients a day and 99 people said no. But I remember the first day that I went into my job and this is when I was like really desperate, right? You guys gotta remember, like I could not get a job after university. Um, when everybody else around me had, you know, had, had already got job offers and whatnot. And I remember the first day I walked into Yellow Pages. The guy comes in, he's like, hey, my name's Pavin. You know, I worked for Yellow Pages for five years, and here's my paycheck. And he showed, and going back, the number one thing I wanted to do after university was to make money. I, I thought, if I made $100,000, that's my goal. Like, I was like, I was gonna shove dirt to like make 100,000. And that's just something I wanted, right? It's just like, that's the benchmark I wanted to hit. And the first day he comes in to our training, he's like, here's my paycheck, 250,000. He made 250000 at Yellow Pages last year, and he was the number two sales representative out of all the company. But I was like, wow, you can really make some good money here. So the very first day, I went up to him, I shook his hand, hey, I'm Tom, I, I just got hired. I want to learn everything about sales from you. He's like, all right, sure. Every single one of our calls are recorded, so I got all his call recordings, I'm running them down, I'm practicing in front of the mayor, I'm like pretty much obsessed with hitting that goal. And last year he finished number two and I finished number three. And that's because in the entire country, and that's because I learned from someone who's been there and done that. So I think the best life hack that you can apply this for anything is the fastest way to learn something is doing it from someone who's already done, been there and done that. And if you can attach them, yourself to them and get them to actually really open up and teach you everything, um, I think that's better than you reading books and experimenting yourself and doing whatever. So, I guess what I want to do today, uh, next slide, David. Ne uh, next, and actually, I don't know what time. So this is in Bali, 2016, August, and that's when I was really inspired by like Amazon FBA. Like I went to Bali with my girlfriend for a vacation, and I met some people who were making money online as well, and I was like, something just hit me. I don't know, like, it was like, I just need to make money online. I need to be mobile, I need to like travel the world. I wanna have that freedom. I wanna be able to just be anywhere in the world that I want to be um, and making money at the same time. And that trip really, really changed. It just triggered something, I can't really explain, I don't know what it is, but um, yeah, it just definitely triggered something inside of me. So, five months, August, yeah, five months later-ish, we launched on January the 1st on Amazon.com, uh, which is, the US side, and um, so from March 1st, 2017 to August 1st, 2017, so we launched in January the 1st, um, until August the 1st, 2017, what is that, eight months, 
we made a whopping of $732 in eight months. I was probably better off just to pick up recycling bins and bring them to Home Depot to make money or do whatever to make money. Um, and next slide. But we didn't give up. And this is the numbers today. Uh, from January 1st, 2018 to today, we are at, uh, in terms of profit, in terms of sales, we made 134,000 in sales. We've sold over 8,000 units, and we've done 65, close to $65,000 in profit. Um, and that's just within uh, two, less than two, uh, less than two months, essentially, right? So the point I'm trying to make is, if we had given up, at any point during the first year, from beginning to August 1st, there's absolutely no way we would have been there, like been here in, uh, where we are today. And the reason why I'm sharing everything with you guys is because I really want you guys to understand, like this is a fucking business, like it's hard, it's not easy. Like anybody who tells you this is easy, maybe they're a genius, I don't know, maybe they hit some gold mine, I don't know. But generally speaking, like 80, 90%, people are gonna have trouble. And I just want to let you guys know that I was one of those people that had trouble selling on Amazon as well. And the numbers show themselves. Like eight months, seven hundred dollars profit. Sure, I might have. Some people, oh, at least you made money. Like, I mean, it's it's very very minimal. That I don't think it's it's pretty pretty much the same as like being not profitable, in my opinion. So, yeah. So if I can do it, you can too. Seriously, I have. I got kicked out of all those schools. Um, I, yeah, like I, I failed. My first product failed, second product failed. Um, I have no background in online e-commerce stuff. Like I didn't have some crazy online business I was doing before this. Like I just want to make money online. I had that dream, I had that vision, and I want to execute it. So, um, yeah. Okay, but how? Next. Finding the right product is, so a question you guys might ask is like, okay, so Tom, you did you know, $700 in sales the first year, or $700 profit in the first year. That's in eight months. And just this year alone, two months, you made 65,000 in profit. How? My answer to you is finding the right product will be 80% of that. There's 20% of everything else that I can talk about in the future, but today, I wanna focus on finding the right product. But how do you find the right product? So there's two things. There's building a brand and launching a product, right? So I'm sure you guys know the fidget spinners, right? When the fidget spinners came out, people got into the space and people were making insane amount of money, like insane. Because there were so many people out there that were trying to find fidget spinners and it was such an easy way. It was, there was no barrier to entry. Anybody could have you know, bought something from China, shipped to Amazon and sold it. Um, but that is not the business that we want to be in. Why? Because it's not sustainable. Right now, if you go on Amazon.com, it's only the Chinese suppliers selling fidget spinners. Because people like us consumers, we don't care if a fidget spinner is, you know, from China or from Canada. We only really care about the price point. And right now, that market has already been killed by Chinese suppliers because people only care about price point and. People only care about price point, Chinese suppliers gonna come to the market and just kill everybody because you cannot compete with a Chinese supplier when it comes to pricing. They have the best pricing, like in the entire world. So what we're trying to do here is build a brand, right? We're here to build multiple products that serve a particular customer. So for example, someone who does, I don't know, like yoga is pretty hot in Vancouver, right? Well, this person who does yoga, let's call her Lucy. Well, Lucy's gonna go to a yoga studio She's gonna have a yoga mat. She's gonna have her Lululemon like stuff. She's gonna have, I don't know, like whatever. But she's gonna have a particular set of products that she's gonna buy from someone that's yoga related. Why don't we build a yoga brand so that she can have, so we can offer her the yoga mat, the whatever, the whatever, the, all that stuff. So we wanna build a brand. The tools that we need are um, to find these products. So I'll teach you guys a couple ways and David will actually touch base on uh, this a little bit more extensively in his uh, presentation. But uh, Bar Launch is a Amazon related software company. I um, highly recommend for you guys to check them out. 
Okay, so step number one is what I want to teach you guys today is how do you validate what's a good product, what's a bad product. If I were to give you this product and I say, is this a good product to sell on Amazon or not? I want you guys by the end to be able to say, no Tom, that is not a bad product because it's very competitive, it can break easily during shipping, um, it's this, it's that, it's that. Because if I can teach you guys the principles for you guys to go home and start validating whether it's a good product or not, I think that's better off than, than me just giving you guys a bottom product and you guys don't know, like down the road, if you wanna launch your own product, it might be a bad product, right? So I wanna teach you guys how to like validate if it's a good product or not. So this is a screenshot from Viral Launch. Viral Launch, what it is, it's very easy. You go on Amazon, it's a Chrome extension, right? You download this Chrome extension from Viral Launch. You go on Amazon.com and you type in a, a keyword. For example, Mason, Mason Jar. And then it's gonna, this is Viral Launch, it's gonna curate all these different listings for you, right? And there's different columns. So it goes from the top guy to the bottom guy. So one, two, three, four, five. It's got a brand name, it's got a title, it's got the category it's in, it's got the BSR, which you guys don't need to worry about right now, and it's got the monthly rep. Can you guys see that at all or no? It's a bit blurry. It's a little blurry. Can you, um, is there, What's that better, I guess? Uh, there's, 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 okay, that's, yeah, we'll, we'll just stick with that. But the first monthly revenue says 47,000, like 8,000, 224,000, whatever. But regardless, the number one thing that we want to stay away from is a category that is dominated by a major brand. So this, I believe, was uh, gym shorts. And under brand, you get to see Under Armour, Adidas, uh, Nike, Adidas again. So. If we were to launch a product, do we want to be competing with Adidas and Nike? No, like we do not want to be competing with these guys. So let's say if, um, another one could be, like what's another good example that you guys can give me, maybe? That is like dominate, like, shoes. Cell shoes, yeah, shoes, cell phone, right? iPhone, Samsung, those are pretty much the ones we know. Um, watches as well. So these are just some examples. So stay away from products that is dominated by a major brand or when you say a product, a brand name constantly like right away just shoots up in your head. For example, like a mason jar, no one cares. I don't even think there's like a major brand that dominates it. So it could be anything, no one really cares, right? So stay away from, so that's number one. Um, step number two is reviews versus sales. And I think this is actually the most important um, point here. So what I mean by that is on Amazon, customers can leave you reviews. And reviews is something before you can actually buy reviews. But Amazon just recently, or last year, came down with a ban saying that you cannot buy reviews anymore, which is a good thing. Because at the end, of, because if you can buy reviews, then it's just about who's got a deeper pocket. You buy a thousand, well I'll buy two thousand. You buy two thousand, I'll buy five thousand. That's not fun to compete with people that maybe don't have a crazy amount of budget. So it's a good thing, um, but if we were to take a look at the review on the very right column there, th this is a product called Vitamin C Serum, and this was actually my first product that I picked. And it was a mistake, but it was a blessing in disguise, which I'll explain later. But if you type in Vitamin C Serum right now, you get to see, so ranking number one, the second column, one, two, three, four, five, so this is the top 11, and the review, the number one guy got 8,300 reviews on his listing. That is a shitload of reviews. And he's making $527,000 per month on that listing. Half a million dollars per month selling vitamin C serum on Amazon. And this is a private label brand. This is like Tom's vitamin C serum. They're not Olay or any of these like crazy, you know, brands that's being on featured commercials. This is literally some brand that someone started on Amazon. Um, and if we were to go down, you see 946, 156, 1,627. So these guys have a lot of reviews. This is something that we do not want to go into. This is something we do not want to go into. We want to go into something where people have very little reviews. What I mean by little is 50 reviews or less. So when you type in a keyword, like I say, so this is vitamin C serum. Let's just say, for example, vitamin E serum. People on, um, 
on the on the monthly revenue, they're making like 10,000, 20,000. It's not as much as 500,000, obviously, but they only got like 20 reviews, 30 reviews, 50 reviews. That's a good indication for me to actually go into the market because I can compete. With six, eight, if, if the top 10 people on the first page have more than, their average reviews more than 1,000, I would not touch that with a five meter step. Unless you can go in there and just like provide some like crazy amount of value and just make this like the best vitamin C serum in the entire world and you got a crazy marketing strategy behind it and you're very, very good at online marketing on Facebook and stuff like that. Um, but other than that, I would not touch this at all. So that's a bad example, something you don't want to do. Uh, okay, so number three, what I'm looking for is consistency. So what I mean by that is with Bottle Launch, we can do is you can click on monthly revenue and you can actually sort everybody by monthly revenue, right? From the top, who's making the most to who's making the least on the first page. What I'm looking for here is I'm looking for people, I'm looking for consistency. So what I mean by that is obviously it's very natural for a top guy to make the most amount of money. But I don't want, if I type in vitamin C D serum and the top three guys are making like, you know, 80,000 for example, and then everybody else is not making any money at all. 100, 200, 300, 400. I don't want to go in there because only the top three guys are taking up all the spots. And in order for me to even get a little bit of that market share, I have to be in the top three. And there's thousands of sellers selling this product and you don't want to, compete like that. Um, it's very, very difficult to actually get into the top three, first of all, and if they have a lot of reviews, do not even try. So I'm looking for something that's consistent. If you don't look at the reviews, I actually, but if you look at this, this is something I would actually consider quite consistent. So first guy making 86, uh, 80,000, second guy making 76,000, 73, 60, 58. So there's a small gradual decrease in the number of um, monthly revenue. So this is a good example of what consistency is. This is a bad example of what consistency is. So if we were to look at this column right here, just look all the way up, um, it says 15,000, 10,000, 8,000, 6,000. But then if you get to the middle of the page, you get to see that, look, the guys in the bottom, they're not making any money at all. They're making 100, 200, 300, 400. I would like to see this be more spread out where top guy could be making 15, then maybe 12, 10, uh, 11, then eight. So everybody on the first page can they actually make some good money. Competition, so this is number four. If you and I, let's say today I wanna to go on Amazon and I wanna buy this. There's thousands of listings. I'm only gonna buy, most likely, I'm gonna buy one of these only for myself. So when you're selling something on Amazon, there are competition. So you wanna enter in a niche, you wanna enter into a market where competition is, your co essentially your competitors suck. So you can go in there to actually out-compete them. But how do you out-compete them? Well, the easiest way for to you to see if the competition is doing something good or bad is by actually going into their listing and just to see like, just to see what they're selling, just to see their listing. So this is a really bad listing. Why do I say that? Well, first of all, you're allowed up to nine photos on Amazon. This person only got one, and like, I don't even know what that is. That's like a door, yeah, a door bar rack. So, he has the opportunity to actually do so much more to that photo. Number two is in his listing, right in the middle up here, it's very poorly written. You, can, you can't read this right now, but it was like pretty much gibberish, right? So what we do is we wanna go in there, right? We wanna basically um, offer nine beautiful images. We wanna offer some really good copywriting. What I mean by copywriting is writing that the, the, the wording to make sure that um, people actually can read this and we're like, wow, this is a really good product. So this is someone, this is a good example of someone who's actually have a really bad listing. We do not want to sell anything that is patented or trademarked. And this is something that you need to do your due diligence on before you launch your product. This is a perfect example of one of my students um, he launched this product and he got burned. Well, he didn't get burned. Uh, he got a letter and basically he took it down. Uh, he stuck with a bunch of inventory, but it could have ended up a lot worse in my opinion. But these are fingerlings and this company is making 
roughly 300 to 500,000 per listing on Amazon. So they're making millions and millions of dollars per month on a large scale. I would say it's very well worth your money to actually book a plane, go to China and pick a manufacturer from the ground up, asking them if they have different verifications and proving, giving them the proof to you that they can, they actually have these verifications. Because if not, they're just like sawing things together and selling to you. And that could easily get broken during uh, shipping or whatever. So think about that before you launch a product. Yeah, complicated to use. So his product was very complicated to use. And that's another reason why he's getting a lot of returns. Um, people buy the product, they try to install it, doesn't work, um, send it back to Amazon. So if you have a product that's very complicated, make sure you include a manual, an insert card, a follow-up email, a link to a video that you've done to explain the product, wherever it could be. Um, yeah. And this again, this is the importance of picking the right product. So this is our, so these are two products that we have right now. You can see it takes the same amount of time to launch a good product versus a shitty product. It's not like I can launch a good product and I have to put more energy into it. It literally takes the same amount of time to source, to list, to put it on Amazon, to this, doing this and that. But look at the difference of these two products. So the, 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 this is year to date. The blue mark is um, profit. The gray is cost. So product number one, we've done roughly $60,000 in profit. And product number two has done, hasn't even broken 10,000. And they're the exact same in sales. Profit wise, it's probably like a couple thousand. And we literally went through the exact same procedure as number one versus number two. So spend, if, if I were to go back and start this journey all over again, um, I would spend majority of my time finding the right product because this will happen. One product will literally 10x, 100x the other one and you're spending the same amount of time. So why not focus a little bit more on that one instead of this one? Okay, now the boring part is finding the product. So there's four ways I find products. Number one is social media. So what I mean by that is Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, um, not so much Snapchat, but um, yeah, so social media channels because there's gonna be companies that are advertising, um, there's gonna be companies that are advertising the products and you can literally see that product and be like, well, that's a cool product. Product idea, write it down, go home, throw it on amazon.com, run the viral launch numbers, and then see if it's a good product or not. Let the numbers tell you if it's a good product or not. Um, I have from friends who are trying to get into Amazon and I'm like, come to this meetup. They're like, no, 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 I already know a good product. I'm like, okay, hey, so how many people, like how much are they doing on the first page? It's like, I don't know, like, I have no idea. Like just because you think it's a good product does not mean it's a good product. You're not selling this product to yourself. You're not buying your own product. You're selling this product to everybody else who's gonna be buying it. And you can't think like millions and millions of people out there. So let the data speak to itself. Base your decisions on data, not your emotions, if that makes sense. Second is viral launch product discovery, which I think David is gonna talk a little bit about that. Number th three is deal sites. So there's a bunch of different sites out there where people like myself, we throw our products on there to get a massive discount, so like 50% off, 60% off, 70% off, and you can use these deal sites as leverage. You can go on these deal sites and see what other people are selling, and you can use that as a product idea. And then number four is going down a rabbit hole. What I mean by that is you're gonna go, you can go on amazon.com, you can type in a keyword like vitamin C serum. It's a bad product. But you can also click into, so the number one guy, remember how he's making like $500,000 a month? We can click onto the listing, click into his storefront, and then see what else is selling. So maybe his vitamin C serum has 8,000 reviews, it's very competitive. But maybe he has a bunch of other products that he just recently launched that only has 20 products but are doing 10,000, 20,000, 30,000. So you can actually kind of go down a rabbit hole to see what other people are selling and basically just kind of going down that, yeah, just pretty much going down a rabbit hole and just keep on seeing what other people are selling, what this product is, and what are people selling um, across all different storefronts. 
So that's the end of my presentation. But um, like I said, I so when I first started my YouTube journey, um, or my YouTube journey, my Amazon FBA journey, I was kind of documenting my journey, right? Um, on YouTube, I have a YouTube channel called FBA Hustlers, um, and didn't really think too much of it. I just wanted to throw some videos online, see if it sticks or not. Um, and since then, I've found an amazing group of people that are doing the same thing as I'm doing. And David happened to be one of the people that I met. Uh, he has a YouTube channel as well. And um, I think at the end of the day, you know, all it takes truly like, is just meeting, like if you met the right person, if you met one person, that person could literally change your life. And everybody's here for a reason. And I think a year from today, 2019, 2020, 2021, maybe some of you guys will look back and be like, wow, I came to this meetup and Tom maybe inspired me, motivated me to take action. And maybe I you know, joined Tom's group or whatever. Um, and you're gonna meet many, many other people down the road as well. So I think meeting the right people who are on the same mission as you, who can be there, support you, support each other, is invaluable. Um, and I'm planning on doing more of these. I've been doing a lot of events online, like webinars and Facebook Live and all that stuff, but with people all over the world that's in my Facebook group at the, at the moment, that's how I met Oscar as well. Um, and I wanna do more local events because there's nothing like a face-to-face -face interaction. Um, so if you guys can right now, everybody get out their phone and email me. Just email me, at, that's my email. Just send me your email with your name. I'll put you on my list. And then next time we have some sort of event, it's most likely gonna be here. I think this is a really good venue in downtown Vancouver. Um, I would like to email you guys. I'd like to invite you guys to, to come. Um, and um, that's pretty much it. So now David has uh, his presentation as well. Um, I think for my presentation was more about how to validate products. Like if I was to give you a product idea, hopefully you can by now tell me if it's a good product or not. But I think David's presentation is more about like a little bit more deeper about how to find products. Long applause for Tom. We have uh, 17 people and 15 people here. <coughs> you need any questions, Tom? Yes, we're gonna do, actually let's do questions right now. Um, if yeah, if you guys have any questions, I would love to. Sorry, I would love to uh, answer those. Yes. Yeah. Uh, one of the problems with Amazon is that you cannot capture the files uh, or the So it's, a bit, so it's a little bit more advanced question. Um, sorry, what's your name? Leon. Like, Leon. Le Leon? Yeah. Leon. Okay, um, so he's asking like, because Amazon, when we sell a product to someone on Amazon, that's not our customer. That's Amazon's customer. And they're very, very secretive about that. Before, Amazon used to give you their email address, their phone number, uh, everything. Now, you don't get their email addresses you don't get their phone numbers, you only get their post code and their street information. So you're asking is how do we capture that customer's information so that it becomes our customer, right? Um, it's a little bit more advanced question, but I'll answer it. Um, so what you can do is there's a few services where you can download all the reports. So you can download their first name, last name, street address, all that stuff and then you upload it onto this like giant portal and then they'll actually spit back a bunch of um, we, uh, email addresses for you. And how they get that is through their national database. So, but, um, but, you're, but you can't even market to them after because then you, yeah, can't, because you can't you just, have, the, the, you have the, to opt in. That permission of the you have to get a permission. So now it becomes pretty much how do we capture their email addresses outside of Amazon Another way you can do it is by running Facebook ads, right? So now you're advertising on Facebook. So let's go back to this mason jar example. I'm selling this mason jar for 75% off today. 
whoever wants to buy it today can opt in and claim this coupon that I have. They opt in and then you send them to Amazon. But during that process, you're collecting their information. But as a beginner, do not do that. Because you're opening up another can of worms, which is Facebook ads. And Facebook ads is really, really, really hard. For you to actually make money back on Facebook ads, it's not like going on Facebook and targeting male, female from this to it. It's, that's very, very beginner. Like if you want to actually make some good money off Facebook, we actually got, why don't you set up, Lucas. He's, this guy makes very good money in job shipping, so tell him how difficult Facebook ads is. Maybe it's um, easy for you now. Well, I mean, I was like you, I learned from someone else that showed me the ropes and I wouldn't have known how to do it if it wasn't for that, really. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it's probably very difficult for a beginner. And the point I'm trying to make is not trying to discourage you guys from not doing Facebook ads, but right now, if you want to start an Amazon business, focus on Amazon. Don't focus on anything else, because the second, what I found with a lot of beginners, is, and this is applies to like everything else in life, right? But when we first start doing something, maybe riding a bike, whatever, we think too much about it. Like we, Amazon, holy shit, like what do I do? There's this, 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 this. It's very, very systematic, right? It's like a recipe. If I were to give you a recipe card with all the ingredients and say, here, cook this steak for me and follow number one to 10, you can probably do it. But you're not thinking like, oh, what should I do with step number eight? When you are actually preheating the oven. You're doing it one step at a time. So that's what I like about Amazon. And that's what I want to show you guys, the systematic approach, like one to 10. First, turn on the oven. Second, defreeze the steak or whatever. So that's kind of the approach I want to make. So kind of maybe a question in the same areas with advertisements. Uh, are you doing any advertisements to achieve the sales you have now? Or that's, how much of a percentage is, it, is that a factor? That's all organically through Amazon. That's a power, okay, that's a power of Amazon. Remember when I told you guys the, the example of like donut shops at the beginning, like conversions and traffic? Amazon has both. If you create your own storefront today to sell this, Shopify, www.tomsmasonjar.com, good luck trying to get people in like right off the bat. But with Amazon, people are already shopping on Amazon. The, the amount of people, 60, more than 60% of, of the population in, a, in the States have an Amazon Prime account. People will go on Amazon to do what? To buy. What else are they gonna go in there for? They're, they're there to buy. They have their credit card on file. They trust Amazon. Um, they, they know it's gonna get fast shipping. So Amazon's already providing that platform for you. And all you need to do is sell your products on Amazon. Now, having said that, we are trying to build a brand. And just recently, actually last week, we're partnering up with agencies who are building our uh, sales on our own website, et cetera, et cetera. But at the beginning, if you want to start an Amazon business, focus strictly on Amazon. So is that your intent at the beginning to get sales and then build a brand? Because a lot of people will build up their own asset from the beginning and try and build that, market it on, with AdWords, with organic, versus Amazon where you're really reliant on them. It's not yeah. an asset necessarily, right? Um, at the beginning, to be honest with you, like, Greg, can you just repeat your question one more time? So it's, it's really, do you, with your strategy, you go the F, FBA route, where, like you said, people are going to buy, there's an infrastructure set up, but you're not necessarily building an asset. Whereas if you did your own website, a Shopify website, for example, and drove traffic there, wherever you want to do that, you're building an asset that you can possibly sell. Yeah, so um, two things I would say to that. Number one is, um, at the beginning, my strategy was just to focus on Amazon. Um, Amazon FBA as a business, I just want to focus on that, nothing else. And master it, and then slowly diversify off of Amazon. But the second part, does that answer your question? Just like, at the beginning, I just want to do Amazon. Like, no Shopify, none of that. Because I knew if I opened that kind of worms, I'm opening another thing like that I'm going to be so that was going crazy about. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely, yeah. We had a website, we had social media accounts, but we didn't spend too much time on it. We focused strictly on Amazon. And the second part of that is, is this, is, so with Amazon as being an asset, I would argue it is, and I would argue that it's very much sellable, because I was, two weeks ago, I was actually on a call. Um, I started a new YouTube series this year called uh, Journey to a Million. It's almost like a mini documentary series for myself. Um, because I want to sell my business for a million dollars next year. 
And so in order to do that, I had to get on a call with a broker um, who broker deals for Amazon sellers and buyers and stuff like that. Um, for just to get you get a rough, rough idea, um, right now, so what they look at is your 12 months of sales. So let's say you're on Amazon for two years and finally year number two, you're like getting sales, right? They look at the past 12 months. They don't look at your first year or second, just the past 12 months. And they, they look at your 12 months and you can usually get about 2.5 to 3.5 X of your yearly net profit. So let's say this year, so let's say each year, each month, we make $10,000 net profit, right? Make $10,000 net profit. Um, that's $120,000 per year that we're making net profit. You can usually sell that for 3X. So you can sell it for 360,000. Yeah, so it's very much, there's actually marketplaces out there where it's, it's a very, very sellable business. But you're still taking a hit compared to most models that do five to 10 years profit. Sorry? But I mean, other, other assets you can do five to 10 years profit, so you're still taking a bit of a hit for the fact that you're relying on Amazon. Like five to 10X. Five to 10X profits, yeah. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure what other businesses are selling for. Right. Luke, do you know how much dropshipping businesses are selling for? Um, well, I know that they can be perceived higher if they have their own customer list, you know, mm -hmm. and like, that you can retarget and sell more to yeah. for BP buyers. Yeah. Like you don't get the emails that you were saying with Amazon. Yeah. And I have heard they can sell for more money, but. I, I think it's very important to diversify off of Amazon mm -hmm. because you don't want to put all your eggs in my basket. Our accounts get, got suspended before without warning. Amazon is a savage. They, they, Jeff Bezos does not give a shit about any of us. Like he will just ban your listing and it's up to you. You're, you're guilty until you have to prove in your own, you have to prove your own innocence. So I'm, right now, that's why, that's why we hired a marketing agency two weeks ago or a week ago from the UK who's gonna be managing all of our Facebook ads, driving that Facebook traffic directly to our Shopify store, not our Amazon store. And then we're trying to build that brand now. But hey, why can't you have, you can have the best of both worlds. You can have Amazon sales, which we're obviously doing pretty well. Like I don't wanna get off of Amazon but let's bring another stream of revenue. Let's bring it up there. Um, so, yeah. Um, how do you scale your business? For example, you, you are a Canadian. Do you start selling on the US or in Canada? Yeah, that's a good question. How do you scale later for UK or France? Or yeah, that's a good question. I would recommend everybody here to sell on .com, which is US based. Canada, no volume. States, everybody <coughs> loves Amazon. Everybody loves to shop on Amazon. So um, in terms of how do you sell on .com, it's just simple registration. Um, I did it a long time ago, so I kind of forgot, but you just like go on Amazon.com, sign up for an account, and you can just, there's some other s n tiny little stuff, but you can figure that out, it's pretty easy. If not, call Amazon, they're very helpful because they want you to be selling on that platform. Um, in terms of scaling. One suggestion though, yes. if you're gonna register on Amazon as a seller account, you want a pro account, register in Canada because your monthly fee is lower than if you register first in the States. Yeah, it's good to save me some money. Yeah. Sure. Um, but in terms of scaling, like right now we're getting to the point where we can scale. Like we finally have some money that we can throw out and see what comes back. At the beginning, like this bit, one thing, okay, one lesson I actually learned in this business that I actually didn't learn before, um, didn't know before, but it's so obvious. This is a very, very cash heavy business. Like extremely, extremely cash heavy. If you do not have cash in the bank, you can't play. That's pretty much it. Um, we have not taken a single penny out of this business at all. We've reinvested everything. Why is it cash heavy? Well, like you're ordering more inventory, right? At the beginning, maybe you ordered 500 to start off with. Now you're ordering 1,000, 5,000, 10,000. That requires money. Maybe you're launching more products. This product needs 5,000 here, that product needs 10,000 there. Um, you're launching the mar more marketplaces. European market, UK market, all that requires cash. So at this point, we're finally getting to the point where like we have some cash, and that's why we just hired the marketing agency. Um, at the beginning we didn't, because I, I, like, I knew that if we did, they could bring all the sales on, but if we're out of stock, then that money just went to waste. So at the beginning, um, it's very cash heavy, Anybody who tells you that 
you can start an Amazon business and drive a Lamborghini in three months. Uh, it's very, very, again, hey, maybe people have done that, maybe you're a genius, but for majority of us, most people in this room, it's gonna be a pretty difficult task, so. How much time do you typically spend when you're doing a product research for a product? Uh, great question, because that's the biggest mistake that I made in, well, second biggest, is not doing enough of product research. Um, we were doing product research, we found a product, and we stopped. And we're like focusing all our attention on um, launching that product. But going back, if I were to start this journey all over again, what I would do for sure is to consistently do product research. Have more products, build up that basket of product. Maybe right now I don't have the money to launch product. But when I do have the money, I can just go in there, take out a product, and then launch, right? Um, the biggest difference that I've seen with multi, multi-million dollar sellers versus people that maybe do $5,000 a month, $10,000 a month, is the number of products that they have. That's, there's one guy that says, I, I do $5 million a year. I'm like, how many products do you have? He's got 60. Well, if you break that down, that's actually not too much. Like, he doesn't really need to make a whole lot of sales per day per product in order to achieve that goal. So, going back, I would definitely spend more time on doing product research. And in terms of the time, there's not like, you know, really a set time, it's just up to you. But now we have the luxury, I, we just hired our first employee, um, it's virtual assistant, so she's out of the Philippines, but she's still working 40 hours a week, she's awesome. And 15 hours of her 40 hour per week, she's purely doing product research. Because right now we're getting to the point where like, we just wanna launch more products. Like, give, me, give me products and we just wanna launch, we just wanna launch, so, yeah. Your revenue is, um, is that coming from multiple products or is it coming from a single product? Most of it is coming from a single product and that's again, it's a big risk on our end. Um, but, and that's another lesson I've seen. I, I've seen other people's storefront, you know the 80-20 rule, right? And this applies to Amazon as well. Like 80% of the revenue usually comes from 20% of the products. Um, and right now we're, try, we're launching more products to try to diversify a little bit, so yeah. How much percent is uh, Amazon charge you? Uh, 30%. 30%. 30%. 30%. 30%. 30%. 30%. 30%. 30%. 30%. 30%. 30%. 30%. 30%. 30%. 30%. 30%. 30%. 30%. 30%. 30%. 30%. 30%. 30%. 30%. 